I don't, I don't think I could carry another soldier. His shoulders are, are hurting. He was heavy. You don't need to be a padre out here. You need to be a circus strongman. Thank goodness I know others. I wonder if he'll live. His thigh looks pretty smashed up to me. He cried for mercy as we dragged him, but we pulled him through. He's pretty strong. Another splendid, smashed up body. Look what you've done, they cry. Look what you've done, Padre. All these divisions you have broken down so one new nation might be born. Fired by one spirit, buoyed by one hope, pressing on like one man through the valley of death and the shadow of hell, through a sea of blood, to triumphant peace and final victory. Look what you've done. Why must we lose this spirit of unity? Born to us by these dead and wounded comrades on a thousand different battlefields. Why must we? Because it's not splendid. It's not a unity of, of, of persons, it's a unity of bodies. In war, man is not a person, he's a puppet, and others pull the string. If you say to a man, go, he goes, go, go, go. He has no choice. If he cries for mercy, they pull the string anyway. <laughs> he has no freedom. No choice. No life. And that's the essence of anyone's personality. Look, I am not, I am not saying we shouldn't have armaments or force. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying those armaments, that force, it's... It's a sign of our weakness, not of our power. It's through that weakness that men are commanded. It's an index of our spiritual and moral impotence. And unless we recognise that, unless we recognise it, there will be no truth, there will be no progress. And truth comes through love, the power of love. And God is love. God is love. And there's more strength in that statement than, than all the amassed armies and navies of the world combined. There's more wealth in that statement than all the millions of the banks in the world can contain. God Almighty. What do we mean when we say God Almighty? The God of the Christians is Christ. Poor, wounded, mocked, nailed to a wooden cross. Now one day we'll see his triumph. Of course we will. But we preach and we worship a crucified Christ, a suffering God. But we cannot think of the cross without the resurrection. The gospel of the cross without the resurrection would be a gospel of despair. The revelation of a poor, powerless, pain like deity caught in the trap of his own creation. The gospel of Christ is a gospel of hope. A gospel of all-suffering love. Faced with an inevitable agony, of course, but powerfully overcoming it. The gospel of a God who comes alongside us, alongside us even in this hell on earth, and thereby he takes upon himself a burden and an, an agony that um, is beyond our power to understand but he takes it on. And when we see God in the light of the cross and the resurrection, then we see that it does not mean that God is, is, is without pain, is without sorrow. Of course he's not. But our God is able to overcome and rise supreme above them. Our greatest need is real faith in the ultimate power of love. Thousands talk of God Almighty and have no faith in love whatsoever. Oh, they believe that God made heaven and earth because if he didn't, well, who the devil did? God is just a conventional name for the great unknown. But God is love.
God is the spirit of unity, of cooperation, of peace. If we say we believe in him, we pledge ourselves to live, to think and act and speak upon our faith in that spirit and in its power. Love reveals itself in the struggling, the striving and the overcoming. It calls upon us to fling ourselves in faith upon it and prove it almighty in our lives. Faith's not an invitation to believe that all this, this absurd and dreadful stuff is the will of an almighty God. It pledges you to consecrate your whole life to the service of love. The God of love is not someone you can accept and then expect it to make no difference to your life whatsoever.